Hi, I'm Ben Collins. I'm here for the first drive of Nissan's new electric-powered Leaf. It's the first entirely electric-powered family car. Um, we're going to find out uh, its performance and uh, see how it handles. First thing you notice when you get in this car is it's kind of like sitting inside an iPod. Everything's really small and accessible. It makes this great sound when you get into it. It doesn't have a gear stick as such. It's a little bit like uh, driving an automatic. You push this toggle across into D and then you silently pull away. A lot of cars so far that have come onto the market, the electric vehicles have been compromises, existing chassis where manufacturers have bolted in an electric motor. But this one is one of the very early cars where everything has been built around from scratch. So there are no common components in this car that, you, that feature anything else that Nissan make, which makes it quite a spectacular new innovation. And driving it really is no different to any other normal car. It's just like driving an automatic. You've got a brake pedal, you've got an accelerator. The only bit that takes a little bit of getting used to is just how quiet it is. It's really effortless to drive, very, very light steering, heavily power steered. Um, and the reason behind that is because they've designed this car to be suitable for all markets. So in Japan, they like no steering effort whatsoever. The opposite end of the spectrum is Europe, where drivers like to get a lot more feel out of the steering wheel and you get a lot more weight in it. So even though this isn't what I'm used to from you know, my experience of all these different cars, normally you get a lot more feedback but it's just effortless. By the looks of it, they've really focused on the suspension as well as the powering of the, of the vehicle. And here's these big dips. You can barely even hear it, let alone feel it through the car. Very, very silent inside the cabin. Very comfortable. You also get a feeling when you look around this car, the whole thing is built around efficiency and simplicity. You can even check your charge remotely from an iPhone, which I think is unbelievable. You can get the car warmed up in the morning, so it's a, it's a cold, frosty day, your car's covered in snow. You can remote activate it with an iPhone, get the thing warmed up, and then arrive and not have to spend the first 20 minutes of your day scraping at the windscreen to get the frost off. Just start testing the performance of this car a little bit. They say it's got a range of 100 miles. Um, it's also capable of uh, 100 miles an hour, but if you start really pushing it, leaning on it in the corners and build up that rolling resistance, you can reduce that range to 60 miles. But they say that 60 miles is the minimum you can reduce it to. You can see on the dashboard as well these little blue circles that are lighting up. And uh, as you apply the, the throttle, it's using more power so that you can see the power output that's being expended is building up on the right-hand side. Conversely, when you, when you brake, dynamos that are working on the braking systems are storing power and recharging the battery as you go. So it's quite a unique feature of electric vehicles. And you get into it and you start sort of driving in a way that you want to try and keep the, keep the range going for as far as possible. The cost of refilling £2.40 to, to charge this thing, you can do a speedy charge in an hour and a half and be back on your way. It's a completely new way of driving, new style. So we've given this electric-powered Nissan Leaf a really good pounding around this Millbrook track, and I've come away really falling in love with it. It's sort of the dawn of a new era of motoring, and it's not all about the big power off the line, big sporty sort of cars. This type of family car is going to really take off, and I've really enjoyed it.